Synchronicity, talk radio for your mind, body, and soul. Join me Mondays at noon as we explore the universal energy that connects us all. Let's discuss our journey of self-discovery, joy, presence, and living with authenticity. We can create positive change in the world, and it starts within each one of us. Synchronicity, talk radio for your mind, body, and soul. Mondays at noon on CITR 101.9 FM, Vancouver. Hello, welcome again to Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard. Thank you for being with me today. This is CITR 101.9 FM in Vancouver, or you might be listening in Nova Scotia at Axe Radio Canada, or online at CITR.ca, CosmicDimensions.com, EmpowerRadio.com, or on the Co-Creator Network, or you might even be watching on YouTube, because I've been posting my videos up on YouTube dot com forward slash spiritual show if you want to check them out there uh but they're mostly just audio with like slides i don't have a video camera in here right now too much multitasking for me to take on so today we are going to be talking about probably a variety of things um manifesting creating the life that you want today's guest is mr 2020 from free in 1989 he was taken hostage in the camp hill prison riots and that caused his post-traumatic stress disorder. And he realized that his imagination was out of control, which is what was causing these flashbacks and nightmares and all these symptoms. And so he managed to find a way to get back in control. And he no longer suffers from PTSD. And he wrote the book PTSD Free to help others heal. And now he coaches other people in creating the lives that they want using the teaches of, teachings of the late Neville Goddard. And 2020, welcome to the show. Thank you, Marie. It is a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. I just have to say you have such a radio voice. Oh, thank you. Cool. <laughs> so 2020, um, that's actually your legal name now, so people are probably wondering what, what's up with that. Yeah, you, you know, uh, you know re- real quick story on that. The uh, we, we, You're probably aware of like in Native American traditions, whenever somebody's life changed significantly, uh, sometimes their name changed. And the same thing in the Old Testament, sometimes in the New Testament as well. And long story short, I was reading Think and Grow Rich and doing an in-depth study on Napoleon Hill for a class I was teaching. And in one of the rare recordings that I have of Hill, uh, he mentions about his publisher was going to publish his book under the title, Use Your Noodle to Get the Boodle, unless he came up with a million-dollar title. And Hill thought to himself, that'll ruin me. I've spent 20 years doing this research. I wanted to change the world, and that title will ruin everything. And so he went to bed, and he basically prayed. He said, look, I need a million-dollar title. I need one that will change the world. And I thought to myself, when, after you know, hearing that, uh, you know, I should do the same thing. You know, I'm doing a lot of good work helping people, you know, discover what their vision is. You know, I'm doing a lot of good work helping them get focused and develop clarity around what they're here to do and how to do it. And so I went to bed, and I tossed up a little prayer kind of thing, and basically said, look, I, I need a shift. I need something that's going to really help me rock the world and make a difference and bring this message of vision, clarity, and focus out there. And I woke up with this crazy idea that never went away to change my name to Mr. 2020. And uh, that's what I did three months later. Cool. So what does 2020 stand for? It, it all comes down to that whole thing of vision, clarity, and focus. It's the number associated with perfect vision. And I happen to believe, like a lot of my Native American mentors did, that we're all here with a vision. We're all here with a purpose. And we need to get clear about that, and we need to focus on that. And that's the key to happiness. That's the key to ending drug addiction. That's the key to having relationships that totally rock your world, is really being clear about who you are, why you're here, and having the tools to make that a reality for you. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So it's weird calling you 2020. Can I, should I just call you 20, or do you like me to use both? Uh, I hear 20 a lot. I hear Mr. 2020. It doesn't really matter. Whatever, uh, yeah, whatever you do, it's all good. Okay, cool. So in you, you discovered this this way. You discovered Neville Goddard. Um, but before you were working in the prison and you were held hostage, you actually had been studying to be a black belt. And, and you you talk about in some of your recordings how this was sort of something that was just innate within you to begin with. Yeah, right? you know, ab- absolutely. You know, I, I, I fully believe that whatever tragedies or challenges we're born with in life, they're, they're here to... Uh, 
Yeah, Neville would say, reveal the glory of God. Yeah, I, I, I will say to, they're here to help you live your vision. And I was born three months early, two pounds, four ounces. I was picked on by even the girls in school. Everybody picked on me. And this whole thing with, uh, there was a day that came along in my life where I picked up two books. You know, one of them I found in my mom's house, and it was a book by Wayne Dyer. And the other one was Think and Grow Rich. And those two books got me to thinking a little bit, which eventually got me to Neville Goddard and this whole idea of, you know, how you think about the world. What you imagine every day creates your reality. And I don't mean that just in a mystical way, but also in your behaviors and in your belief systems and in how you carry yourself. And, and that changes everything. And that's what I like, Twenty, about the work that you do and about Neville Goddard, because there are some people who are teaching these manifesting techniques, and it's all very magical, and it it doesn't really seem to take into account practicality or, or behavior. And so I, I really like the, the techniques that Neville uses and that you use, because they actually are, are doing that rewiring of your brain and, and creating new habits. You betcha. You betcha. You know, I, I tell people, you mentioned the whole black belt bit. I started in martial arts when I was 12, 13 years old. I got my first black belt when I was 18. And it wasn't about, quote unquote, the black belt, you know, the physical thing. It was about becoming that man who deserves the black belt and, and, and who loves the working out and the training that goes behind that, quote unquote, black belt. And it really is. It's, it's, if, you know, anyone who thinks that something out there is going to make them happy is delusional. It, because happiness literally comes from within. It literally comes from transforming who you are in the world. And, uh, I think that's the coolest part about Neville's work because, you know, he offers techniques that help you with your past, your present, and your future. And they're all primarily based on changing who you are in the world, not just what you, what surrounds you, because what surrounds you will automatically change. The people and the circumstances attracted to you will automatically change as you change, as you fully express who you're here to be. All right. Well, 20, you sent me some, uh, quite a few of, of your products. There was the uh, Prosperity, or was it the Power, Feel It Real Power Pack? Yeah, that's a goodie. And there was also one about manifesting love, which I really liked. And um, I was listening to both of those last night and this morning again, because I feel like uh, so many times we we listen to things and we're like, yeah, okay, got it. And then <laughs> we, we forget like 99% of it. So I've been listening to it again. And I'm actually starting to, um, I emailed you about this because I downloaded your book, uh, Freedom your yeah. ebook, and I was going to purchase your book PTSD free because there is a link to that. Um, there's a link to the first section for free where you can go to freenevel.com. Uh, just look up PTSD free and you can probably find it through that link. And so there was one, one technique that you were teaching and after reading it, I was really inspired and I wanted to download the PTSD book because I actually suffer from uh, symptoms of PTSD myself. And so... But then I was like, no, okay, what I'm going to do is do the technique, like what you said. <laughs> and then if I'm able to, to continue creating that habit, then I'll download the book and develop those other habits. Because we, we tend to take in, especially as spiritual seekers, many times we, we read a book and, and then we read another book and another book and we don't actually start implementing very much of it. Do you find Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why we have a 90-day coaching program on freenevel.com as well. And, and it's broken down into 15-minute chunks. So in other words, every day you get three paragraphs, a five-minute recording, and a 10-minute activity to do roughly. And, and it varies a little bit. But, but it's so important because if it's, if it's not practical, if it's not rubber meets road, we're never going to do anything. And it's like how Buddha said, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. But, you know, but most people miss the point. You're still chopping wood and carrying water. You've got to do things with what you're learning. You've got to do things in this world. This is a tremendous gift, this adventure of a lifetime that we're on. And, uh, you know, we've got to take all this cool stuff that we're learning and apply it to our daily life because that's what we're here to do. So, 20, if we do the 90 days 
the 90 day coaching, does that cover everything? Cause the, th- the thing about freenevel.com is there is so much information. It's hard to know where to start. Yeah, you betcha. You know, I, I would say it probably covers everything that you need in a general sense. You know, of course there's some people that don't focus more on money. So we've got some stuff that's more tailored toward that. We've also got some stuff tailored toward relationships but the program itself is really cool. And I'll tell you what, can I give you and the listeners the first lesson right now? Because it's really, really good. Yeah. So, so, so the, the first lesson is based on an experience I had here in Melbourne, Australia, where I went out for a cup of coffee. And I'm sitting at this little cafe. And I'm watching a group of teenage boys and a group of teenage girls. And the teenage boy, this, you know, one of them, he's talking to his mates. And he stands up. And he starts walking over towards these two girls, right? And you can tell he's, he's smart on one of these girls, okay? So he's walking over. He's getting closer. The one girl looks at the other one and giggles. And at that moment, this young man reacts to something, Aww. turns around, and he goes back to his mates. And, and my question is, what did he react to? He, he didn't react to the girls giggling. He reacted to the meaning he imagined to the girls giggling. And, and, and when, and when you get that, you know, all of our lives, we are, um, we're imagining machines. We are imagining 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's something going on up in that box. And until we're aware of that, we're going to allow things like that to run our lives. So, so not only does the imagination literally create the circumstances that we choose to have in our lives, the imagination cre- can create absolute terror in my instance with PTSD, or it can create this young man interpreting these two young girls. They're excited he's coming over. I can tell by reading their body language, they're excited that, excited that this one young chap's willing to walk over and say hi, and so they giggle. But he imagines it means something completely different, and nobody wins. And, and that's why I know this stuff changes lives. All of the success stories aside, yeah, all, all the people that I've met who have, you know, like me, taken back their lives from circumstances that were less than desirable. But just looking at that young man, it's a typical thing. In our daily lives, we're always imagining meaning and adding meaning to things. And that drains the battery, that distracts us from our dreams, our visions, our goals, that gets in the way of our relationships. And that's part of what we want to uh, help people realize. The, this thing called the imagination impacts everything in our lives. And, and once we start getting a grip on this and realize we've been given this wonderful tool, all we've got to do is use it, you know, use it properly. You know, the young man could have interpreted things very differently, and ended up, you know, dating the girl or something, but but he didn't. So that's what I want to change in the world. Oh my gosh, that's such a bummer. I can imagine you watching <laughs> that scene. Yeah, and, and you know, we've all been there. I was there. You know, I'm 48 now, but I was once 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, you know, been there, done that. And and it's the thing where, you know, whatever age you're at, you get to learn these tools. You get to learn this kind of philosophy and go, you know, uh it's not about controlling your life. It's about creating with your life. And we really get to, you know, create the attitudes and the behaviors and the circumstances that uh, allow us to really express who and what we are. Cool. Well, in your your website, freenevel.com, you can sign up and, and you have a, a daily, a mailing list where every day you get a new Neville Goddard tip. And you talk a lot about feeling it real. Yeah. So, and that, that seems to be like the main chunk of, of the information on the site is all about creating your life through this, this feeling it real, feeling the state of, of where you want to be. Like you said, being that the embodiment of that black belt before you actually had it in reality. So can you explain what is feeling it real? Yeah, you know, Neville taught three techniques. Well, Neville taught a lot of things, but we've pretty much distilled it down into three techniques. Uh, one has to do with the past, one the present, and one the future. But, but the number one thing, even before we talk about those, is uh, Neville taught 
feeling is the secret. It's not about visualizing or making a movie about you. That, you, that can be important. But what's really important is is the feeling behind it. Because, uh, you know, for example, years ago I used to train salesmen. And in a sales call, if you hear the client say, well, that looks good, you know, that, that's one thing. Or if he says, well, that sounds okay, that's one thing. But, you know, because those two things are, they're a little negotiable. The, the brain understands it looks good, but it might not be. It sounds good, but it might not be. And if we just go in there and talk to ourselves with affirmations or make movies of ourselves, there's, it somewhat gets rejected by the mind. But when we know something, when we feel something is a good idea, when we feel something is true, that's when we act on it. And so the whole idea behind feeling it real is to use the methods of Neville and to use the imagination in a way that creates the feelings that we need to act from, because we always act from feelings. And, and that's, that's part of the big secret with it all. Cool. And so the feeling it real, now you, you take time out of your day to do these little feeling it real sessions. Hello? Yeah, you know, it, yeah, it, it's really, really cool because when we do that, you know, like literally three times a day, what, what I do is imagine the ideal day. And when I say imagine the ideal day, Neville's got a few tips that are really, really important. Uh, one of them is you construct this scene or the feeling that you have is based on something that would imply your wish is already done. And this is really cool because um, I, I've been living in Australia since 2010. And it wasn't until this year I needed a car because I work on the Internet. I do coaching over the Internet. So, you know, I, I don't have to leave my home if I don't want to. But it was in the past year I decided I was going to buy a little German car because I love German cars. And what most people do with you know, who've watched The Secret or have done stuff like that is they imagine the car. They know all about the car. They know all about how fast it goes. They imagine seeing their body in the car. And that feels good, but it doesn't feel real. Uh, what feels real is, uh, well, I'll tell you the scene that I used. I created in my mind the state of being really happy about paying car insurance because paying car insurance implies that I have a car. And so it relieves all the stress around the car. It relieves all this desire to have a car because often desire becomes an addiction in and of itself. And it just becomes, it came, comes down to, I constructed an imaginal scene in my mind that implies my wish has been fulfilled, having that nice little German VW car. And suddenly, you know, I, the car pops up. I find the perfect car in the perfect place at the perfect price. Uh, for some reason in Australia, people are willing to drive hours and hours to buy a car. And I'm not. You know, I'm willing to drive five minutes to buy a car. And all my friends thought I was crazy. But uh, here I found a car, the ideal car, five minutes from my home. But the whole key is with Neville's work is you construct the scene that implies the wishes fulfilled. And so I imagine being easily able to pay my car insurance and glad to do it. And sure enough... I find the car, it shows up in my life, my behavior changes, so I find the car. And when the bill shows up, I've obviously got plenty of money to pay for it, and I'm happy to do that. So it's a little more comprehensive than what a lot of people are doing out there. Cool. Yeah. And and you mentioned, I, I really like the, the the thing that implies that it's there, because so, mo so many times we get caught up in the details and the specifics of how it's going to come about and... and making it happen. And, and Neville actually says not to do, he doesn't say not to do anything, but he says not to do anything to make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's sort of like, yeah, you know, I, I was talking with a lady the other day, you mentioned that uh, we've got that little uh, $12 package on relationships. And she bought that and she wanted to do a couple minutes on the phone. So we did that. And I'm talking to her and she's, and I asked her, so what do you want? And she goes, I, I want him to text me. And it's like, okay, why do you want him to text you? Well, because I, I really want to hear from him. I want him to text me. And you could hear all this almost anxiety in her voice, all this ah uh, in her voice. And I said, L listen, do you want a text or do you want a relationship? <laughs> and, and what I heard was exactly that, a little giggle and silence. And, and I told her, I said, look, you're, you're, if you're struggling, if you're stressed about it, manifesting a text, you're going to drive yourself crazy. If, if, on the other hand, if you're in a relationship with someone, it's okay for you to text them. It's okay for them to text you. But if you imagine the relationship, if you imagine being in that loving relationship, it just makes everything easier because you're not going, will he, won't he, could he, might he. 
just like, you know, I feel like texting him, so I will. And it relieves the stress from him as well, you know, because we pick up on this stuff from one another. And again, if you imagine a scene that implies that you're in a relationship with someone, uh, it relaxes you, and it makes you more approachable, it makes you easy to be with. It just changes everything just by moving that one little point. Okay, I have a question about that and about relationships, 20. Yeah. When, if you, so... If you're dating someone or you're interested in someone, um, you also talk about like you don't want to try and force it necessarily to be with that person. So right. in your feeling it real sessions, do you actually have to picture like what if it's just sort of a faceless person or is that not real enough? You know, the, the number one thing with relationships, we run into a couple things. One, people want to have their ex back. And often I don't think that's a good idea, but that's a little bit of a different subject. But if you don't have someone in mind, I think it actually works better because the focus, again, it's it's not on, and I'm going to switch realms here a little bit, it's not on the million dollars. It's on being someone who creates wealth. So it's not about the guy. It's about you being the kind of woman that would attract this guy naturally. And, and so, and so you know, when you imagine, what am I like in a relationship? What kind of person am I? And when you get, okay, I'm loving, I'm relaxed, I'm doing my book club thing, I'm you know, taking action on my goals and my dreams because I'm not wasting time, you know, ch- you know being frantic. Uh, when you focus on who am I in this relationship, you know, who have I become since I'm in this lovely relationship, that actually puts you in that state of the ideal you, which will obviously you know, make you more appealing to the ideal you know, mate or soulmate for you. Mm, I love that. And and that's really, like you said, it's not just about the relationship, whatever it is that you want to create. It's asking who am I as this person who is wealthy or has a lot of friends or whatever it is that you want to create. Yeah, I, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I just led a small group through a little training where we modeled and imagined in the qualities of people who produce wealth. So, so in, instead of sitting around going, I want a million dollars, I want a million dollars, or I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire, all that stuff, which tends to create anxiety, we focused on imagining what it's like with you having these eight, uh, eight criteria in your life. And we explored them in some really cool ways. But the whole idea is to get you out of poverty thinking and poverty habits and imagining you being this kind of per- the kind of person that, quote unquote, most people are, to imagine yourself with these habits and with these mindsets that wealthy people actually embody. Because once you embody the habits, once you imagine yourself having these habits and incorporating them into your life, you can't help but produce more time and more wealth and more freedom. Awesome. I love that. And then that's where it comes into the whole brain thing and and creating actual physical habits rather than this magical thinking that that often, like you said, tends to create anxiety. Mm, yeah, ab- absolutely. You know, it, it, it's fascinating to me because if you talk to wealthy people, w- wealthy people will tell you the most valuable thing in their life is time. And if you talk to people that can't seem to accumulate wealth, they'll tell you the most important thing is accumulating wealth or making money or having money. And, and, and so... When, it, when I'm working with people to imagine themselves as, quote-unquote, wealthy, we start teaching them strategies and having them imagine using these strategies that create more time in their life. And, and suddenly, they start producing more wealth. They start being more happy because they've made the shifts inside that make them more like the wealth producers. And, and, it, and that's where the magic happens because you know, we tend to attract people who we're like. And so once we develop the attitudes and the behaviors you know, in imagination and in behavior, physical behavior, that wealthy people have, we can't help but attract people who are wealthy into our lives as mastermind partners, you know, as friends, as clients even, and that just changes everything. 
Awesome. Well, it is time for a break, Mr. 2020. So we'll be back in just a moment. This is Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body and soul. And right now we're talking about, well, in general manifesting, but really creating the life that you want to live and embodying the type of person that you want to be. And uh, we're speaking with Mr. 2020 from freenevel.com. And we'll be back with more Synchronicity in just a moment. Welcome back to Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard. You can find me at spiritualshow.com and past episodes and all of that, spiritualshow.com. Right now, we're speaking with Mr. 2020 from the website freeneville.com. He teaches the teachings of Neville Goddard and uh, who is long ago past. Um, do you want to give us just maybe for people who aren't familiar, who is Neville Goddard? Neville Goddard was, uh, he was a fellow from Barbados who grew up in a family that uh, became probably the wealthiest family in the island of the nation of Barbados. And long story short, in 1922, Neville came to the U.S. basically, you know, seeking to be a dancer, seeking to be a performer. And after about 10 frustrating years of that, uh, he really, you know, converted to, uh, the study of what most people would call mysticism. And, you know, that's when he really began to understand the significance of, you know, how, you know, the teachings of the Bible showed up in his life very differently than most people. And literally from that point in time, about 1932 to his death in 1972, uh, he taught, you know, literally, you know, imagining creates reality and how to do that in a very practical way. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's the short version. Awesome. Yeah, because I, I actually, I'd heard the name Neville Goddard, but I hadn't really heard any of his teachings. And I think a lot of New Age teachers right now who teach the Law of Attraction are kind of teaching what he teaches, but it's not quite the same. And, and his stuff is better. Oh, well, you know, one of the things that I love about Neville is, you know, he's, you know, you know, he was a human being that lived in the past hundred years. And through what he taught and you know, what he learned from his family, what he learned from his teacher, Abdullah, in New York City, uh, his family accumulated millions and millions of dollars. And they didn't just accumulate it to you know, take cruises and sit on the beach. They literally transformed the whole economy of the world of the island nation of Barbados. And I, I think that's one of the things that appeals so much to me about Neville because, you know, he's somebody we can relate to. And, and his processes are nice and well, to us, they're simple, uh, but uh, they're, they're very grounded. And that's important because whatever you're doing in life, again, you know, the whole chop wood and carry water thing, you know, your spirituality has to be expressed in this physicality. So uh, yeah, I think that's the beautiful part about Neville because he literally said, you know, there were two parts to his teachings, the law and the promise. The law is what you hold in mind tends to manifest. And the promise is you get to wake up and realize what are you really? What are you here to do? What's possible for you? And that's what makes a big difference in your life. Awesome. Well, 20, I'm curious now you, I want to take it back a little bit. Um, you were talking about how feeling it real is the secret. And in the feeling it real sessions, you kind of create a, a movie and, and you talk about the, the specifics about what kind of techniques to, to use. But I'm finding in my sessions, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really good at feeling emotions. Yes. Visualizing is not really my strong point. I, I tend to, if I'm, if I have a, a negative memory, I'll see that quite vividly in my mind. But if I'm trying to intentionally bring up the image of something, it's, I'm, I'm really challenged with it. And, and so I'm feeling a bit stuck and, I'm wondering, because there are a lot of people who say, I can't visualize, I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, so, that, And that's good news. You know, but one of the things that happens when people visualize is they make movies of their bodies doing something. And when you make a movie of your body doing something, that actually creates emotional distance. And so, and so you know, for example... Uh, one of the th one of the ways that I exited the PTSD was making a movie of my body in the circumstances it was in. And, and, and that creates a little bit of distance compared to seeing something through your own eyes. 
So it's the difference between seeing my body driving a car, which is entertainment, or seeing through the windshield only and just seeing my hands on the steering wheel, which is more like real life. But what's nice, if you have problems visualizing, you don't have to. You know, visualizing, you know, visual is just one of the modes that the brain works in. Some people do better with hearing, you know, hearing a congratu- congrat- uh, congratulatory uh, conversation. In other words, uh, just tell me something real quick you want to manifest or change in your life. Mm, okay, a new boyfriend. All right. So <laughs> you get the new boyfriend, right? And, w- and what do your friends say to you? Oh, he's awesome. He's so sweet. That's your scene, essentially. Because if you're trying to visualize the boyfriend and all that stuff and you can't see him and, you know, you know, you, you know I, that just, that's going to cause you stress. But on the other hand, if you can imagine your friends calling you up and saying, uh, just name, give me the first name of one of your friends. Uh, Heather. So Heather calls you up and says, wow, he's so awesome. You guys are great together. How does that make you feel? Good. Yeah. So so it's that good feeling. Whenever you're going through life with that good feeling already, and it's even more specific than good, it's showing up in your body, it's showing up in your endocrine system, it's showing up in your behavior. If you really feel that, I mean, you can literally just imagine you know, your best friend calling you up and saying, wow, you guys are great together. Oh, he's so cool. You know, Whatever the phrase is that really gives you the goosebumps, that really makes you feel happy and grateful that he's part of your life, when you when you do a session, and again, we suggest people do sessions once in the morning, once in the afternoon, once at night. They take a few minutes. They feel good. They're an investment. They're, they're a lot of fun. If you do that, that'll be, begin to bring that neurochemical soup into your body. That'll change your behavior. It'll, you know, literally, it'll, re- it, it'll make you the kind of person that will attract that, that man to you. Because, you know, in that, in that kind of situation, again, one of the things I notice with relationships is we almost put stress on other people to make us happy. But whenever happiness comes from within, because, yeah, I'm in this relationship, I'm living up to my potential, I've got all my good things going on. Whenever you have that feeling, there's no pressure on him. Whether, he's in, whether you're in a relationship already or just meeting someone, they're going to get, you have this ease in life, you've got this flow, you've got this lovingness that gives to them and gives to the world. Mm. So all you got to do is hear it. You don't got to see it. For you, hearing is probably, you know, probably one of your strong suits that will help making it feel more real. Oh, I'm so glad that I got to clear that up with you because I've been, I've been feeling a little bit of this, I'm not doing it right, I'm not doing it right. So, and I know that, that <laughs> that's not really helping me. Yeah. So, so how does that feel to you when you just imagine your best friend telling you whatever she's telling you, so you're congratulating you because you guys are so cool together? I, I do like that because, and, and actually I've been with people in the past where, um, someone I know will see us together and they'll say, Oh, you're such a cute couple together or something. And, Hearing that actually made me more interested in the guy yeah. than I was before I heard that from friends. Yeah, see, th- there's a PowerPoint for you. This is this is what I live for because when, when I'm working with someone live, and, and we discover these tiny little bits, because it you know, for some people it's it's a friend telling them something, and and they get it. For other people, it's overhearing your friends talk about it. Did you see Marie and her new boyfriend? Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> For some people, that third person conversation is the one that lights their fire. And when we discover these things, we literally we're unlocking the keys that make your imagination and your mind work at its best. And uh, again, it's just so cool to do that with you. So I'm thankful for the opportunity today. Thank you. Well, 20, I'm curious when you mention working with people one on one, you don't have a lot of time to take on clients one on one and your fee is quite high. So how do people I mean, if they need a little more support, what do they do? Uh, Two things that we offer one, we personally answer uh, my wife and I answer every email we get email is a little bit of a tough medium to work through, but often we can help people with a quick email or two Uh, Two, with that. for people that are in the 90-day program, we do offer some discounted fees. So, you know, one of the reasons why we keep the fees high generally is, you know, we don't want to take people's money to teach them the basics. You know, it, we, well, we don't want to take the money for a coaching call because coaching, again, it, it costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of my time. 
So instead of doing that, we've put together programs like the Feel It Real Power Pack, the 90-Day Coaching Program, so on and so forth, which teach the basics because 90% of the time, the basics are all somebody needs. But every once in a while, we run into people that, yeah, a little bit of coaching would do some good stuff with or 10 sessions of coaching would really take them to the next level of their business or whatever. And so we offer those programs at a really affordable rate uh, to the people that are already in like the 90-day program. If that makes sense. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, and now you, there was a quote. I'm not sure exactly what uh, recording it's from or or what email, because every day you send a new email, which I personally I find really helpful because it helps to remind me. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that today. Yep. <laughs> um, so it, the quote is: When you identify what you choose to be and have in the world, and you do it effectively, you experience a change in position and. I've been doing this for close to a week now, really dedicated to doing it consistently and, and creating a new habit. And I'm still not feeling it in my day. So yes. I'm, I must be not doing it right. Well, two, two things. One, we've just discovered that visual uh, isn't your primary. So, so you're going to probably discover, a, you know, it's sort of like uh, just taking vitamins isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. Discovering what vitamins or minerals you specifically need, uh, that's part of the key. So we've identified, like in our call today, that uh, hearing your friend tell you, oh, you guys are so cute, you know, that's a key point for you. So, so whenever you're doing your sessions, if you're you know, imagining that as part of your sessions, yeah, you know, that's going to really amp up your results because we've discovered a, a you know a key that fits your lock. And two, uh, a lot of it takes momentum because, like you know, literally, I'm 48 years old. Uh, I've had 48 years of let's say quote unquote negative. If I was just starting today, I would have had 48 years of negative momentum probably programmed by the news, the school system, you know, casual gossip conversations that you overhear at the office to basically deal with. And the good news is it doesn't take a lot of time to counter or neutralize all that, but it does take a little bit of time to go from reverse to neutral to derive. And that's literally what any of us are doing once we start working with this kind of stuff. Okay, great. I, I love that. Thank you. Because you, you sent out an email just the other day and I was reading it about, um, I believe it was about manifesting money. But anyway, you told a story about how when you were first starting out doing the, the free Neville.com, every time you'd get a nasty email from someone, you would react and it would throw you off. And I feel like, I mean, I'm, I've been experiencing this. There are people who love the show. They love me. I have great friends. And, and there's like one person who doesn't like me. And if I really think on it, I don't really care for them that much anyway. But it throws me totally off just thinking that they don't like me. So how yeah. did you how did you stop yourself from getting caught up? Because you probably get maybe one percent negative emails, but you were letting that drive you for a bit. You know, isn't it funny? As, as human beings, we, we 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 could be looking at this huge whiteboard in front of us, right? And if there's one tiny little black dot on it. Where does the eye go? <laughs> yeah, it goes right to that black dot. We're, we're, and it's part of our biological heritage because, you know, the, you know, the biology was trained to notice two things, threat and food, because you didn't want to become food and you wanted to be able to take food back to the hut so your family could survive, right? And, and so, you know, we've got this biological heritage that tells us to be concerned about threats. And be, so, so we've just got to acknowledge that that's part of the heritage and let that go. But the second thing is, uh, I was reading uh, Tim Ferriss. And Tim Ferriss, being an author who's controversial in, in some circles, you know, had to deal with negative emails. And so you know, what I did was I adopted the whole thing of, you know, like Tim basically explains it real simple. You know, there are people that aren't going to be happy, period. There are people that are going to disagree with what you do, and that's fine. Uh, you can't tailor your message to them. You can't tailor your life to them because some people will never be happy. Some people will never be happy with you, and that's fine. And so being a professional author, adopting that idea, that identity of being a professional author allows me to go, you know what? I'm writing for my readers, 
The people that don't like it, that's all right. But I'm writing for my readers. I love my readers. That's what a professional author does. That's who a professional author is. And so just like you with your show, you know, you get to identify yourself as the professional X, as the professional broadcaster, as the professional host. And as that host, what do you do? You love your listeners. And that's who you tailor the show to. And if somebody pops up and says, hey, I don't like you, cool. You know, you're free to go listen to somebody else. I, I love you still, but obviously we're heading in different directions. So, you know, thanks for stopping by. And it literally is, it's imagining that identity as the professional who understands, you know, I'm, I'm going to bump into a few people that disagree with me once in a while or dislike me. And that's fine. It's all about that new identity. Thank you, 2020. That brings up a, another question. Um, you mentioned Tim Ferriss. I'm wondering, sometimes we have this image of, I want to have a great relationship, or I want to be wealthy, whatever. And we have a hard time even imagining what it would be like, or what that kind of person is like. So I'm wondering, did you read a lot of biographies? You know, boy, that's a great question. I love biographies. I love... Uh, I'm, I'm one of the, I, I am hyper focused on efficiency and effect, actually effectiveness, a little bit of a different term. So I, I love reading biographies. I, I love listening, to, especially if I can get a biography that's not a biography as an audio book so I can hear the person speaking and, and get how they think because hearing somebody speak really helps you get how they think. Uh, same thing with YouTube. There's a lot of lovely people on YouTube and, uh, you know, you know anything good that I can put into me is is well worth it because again you know if you're focused on excellence if you're focused on black belt the black belt level of living uh you're going to be attracted to other black belts so seek them out seek out their stories and just like what you're doing i love what you do because you're interviewing cool people uh which of course you know that that when you interview us uh we connect and we both are blessed by that so you know all that kind of focus is excellent Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And I get to have your, I, I get you to answer my questions right there. How lucky am I? Oh, we're both blessed by it. And so are the listeners. That, that There's another PowerPoint. It, it, anybody who's a wealth producer you know, has to realize if you and I were doing this one-on-one, -on -one, I would have to charge you money, especially since it's like five in the morning here, right? So, so you know, there, there would have to be some sort of exchange like that. But in this way, you know, literally, you're giving to me by exposing what I do. I'm giving to you by, ex by answering your questions. And we're both giving to the listeners because they're getting all this cool information. And they can go to the free level and read the 600 plus articles and watch the videos and stuff. But it's this whole idea of giving and re-giving that changes the world. And uh, that's where the miracles happen. Mm, I love that. It's like synergy. Yes. And yeah, thank you again for, for being up at probably before dawn in Australia. I'm, I'm waiting for the kookaburros to start laughing because there, there are this beautiful bird here. And right about this time every morning, they'll be way up in the trees and they laugh. They, they've got this lovely lunatic kind of laugh. It's just, uh, you can just tell they're so happy the sun's coming up. And oh. it's, uh, it's a blessing for us to hear every day because nature celebrates every new day. And that's something we get to do as well. Mm, I love, and, and that's one of the things you, you talk about, the congratulatory statements and, and hearing those and feeling them. Um, and if you want to know more about that, you can go to freenevel.com and there's lots of free information too. Um, and, and there's the act of, of celebrating. We, we so often, and I learned this in my coaching training as well, is to celebrate because we kind of keep our nose to the grindstone. And, and if we have a success, we're like, okay, yeah, that's great. Now I got to get back to what I'm doing. And we don't actually get to enjoy the progress we're making. You know, that, that brings us back to something that you mentioned. Sometimes it's hard for people to imagine the relationship or the money and, or the car. And, and that's all fine. That's actually probably a good stumbling point because all of life, from what I can tell, I've spent a lot of time living primitively in the woods, working with Native Americans 20, 30 years ago. Uh, when, when you study nature, all of nature wants to celebrate being alive, whether it's a flower, whether it's a squirrel, a bunny rabbit, 
a deer, you know, all of nature wants to celebrate being alive. And at a core level, so do we. But as human beings, we've been programmed to worship struggle, to fear your neighbor, and, and, and all this crazy stuff. And what are you really here to do? You're here to celebrate. And, and that's why the Neville Goddard Method of Congratulatory Conversations works so well, because even if you can't imagine the car, yeah, you know, what I imagined with my car again was Victoria bringing over my car insurance bill and going, "Hey, twenty here's your bill," and I'm going, "Oh, cool, you know, I'll pay it," and and just that that lovely feeling of feeling good about it and having her congratulate me because I've got the car, I can easily pay the insurance and all that stuff. You know, we want to be congratulated. That's part of our tribal heritage. That's also part of our biology. And when we can honor that. Yeah, probably one of the number one things that everyone on the planet should be doing is celebrating more. Whatever it is you're experiencing during your day, take a few minutes to give thanks and celebrate it. Not just, you know, beg about it in a thankful way, but celebrate the fact that you exist. Celebrate that you just had a wonderful breakfast. Celebrate you had a wonderful conversation. Uh, that attitude will change your world. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, it is time for another break. So we will be right back with more Synchronicity in just a moment. This is Synchronicity, talk radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard, and we are speaking with Mr. 2020. And if you want more information about what he teaches, you can sign up for his mailing list at freenevel.com, N-E-V-I-L-L-E, freenevel.com. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome back to Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and your soul. I'm Marie Bernard. We're speaking with 2020. Coming up in just a few minutes here on CITR is Parts Unknown with DJ Chris Riffick. So stick around for that. And uh, I have another question for you, 2020. I could talk with you all day. So thank you for your time. I, we're probably going to have to have you on again, um, maybe in a couple months after I've been doing all of your techniques consistently. Excellent. <laughs> so my question is, in addition to your, your Feeling It Real sessions, do you meditate? Great question. You know, Neville talks about, he, he ends almost every one of his lectures with the statement, now let's go into the silence. So I'm going to start with that little tiny bit. And the second thing is that he, all, that he talks about going into the state akin to sleep and then doing your sessions. And so... How does that fit in with meditation? To me, meditation is literally sitting in that silence. So what we need to do is literally uh, we need to decentrate and then concentrate. And I know decentrate is not an English word. Yeah, I, I've looked it up. I've practically made it up. I think I've seen it in a couple other uses. But decentrating is literally expanding, letting go into that silence. And whenever you expand and you let go into that silence, whenever you sit in that state of kind of sleep for a few moments, the, the brain waves slow down. And, and, and they literally go from that beta brainwave state, which is all the balance, the checkbook, you know, how to figure out what to say next in a conversation stuff. And the brain waves slow down, so that we start experiencing the alpha and the theta brain waves, which are the creative and the healing ones. And so the short answer is I absolutely do meditate. Uh, like Neville, I spend a fair amount of time every day in the, in the state of sleep, just sitting in the silence. And it's really important that we do that because until we expand, we can't contract and focus on an effective imaginal act. So literally taking a few moments before you do a session and taking some time out during the day, just even a minute or two, just to just focus on breathing. Just notice that you're breathing. Just feel the body. And allow yourself to sit in that silence. That that's the expansion that allows you to relax, so you can effectively then, you know, focus on the scene that you want to create if you want to do that, or if you just want to be blessed by the silence, because that's a beautiful blessing, you know, in and of itself. Mm, totally. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, I want to also. We we just have a few minutes left, and I want to give you some time to talk about anything that we may have missed but I really feel like I need to ask you about revision because especially because um, my therapist had suggested I I try this and she's a PhD in psychology not 
into anytime I talk about the spirituality stuff, she she's quite the scientist. So um, I really love that she'd already suggested I do this. Um, if there's something that's that's happened where I feel like I've made a big mistake, I can go back and, and think about it in my mind and replay it in a way that I would have liked to have done it because then that helps create new neural pathways and it gives you the opportunity to practice because you can't, when you're face to face with someone in a stressful situation, you're not, you're going to go to your habitual way of behaving unless you have some practice to make a new habit. So can you talk about revision a little bit and, and how you use it? Yeah, you know, there, there's three primary techniques of Neville's. And if uh, if the visitor goes to the website and looks up Neville Goddard's toolbox or just puts the word toolbox in the top page, they're going to see these three. One of them is revision. And the powerful thing with revision, it's literally rewriting your past. And here's the deal. Uh, in 1989, I was literally beat to death in the Camp Hill prison riots, revived. I was not a happy camper because uh, the prison stunk and what happens after we're dead is really cool. But I got to come back. I had post-traumatic stress disorder, all that good stuff. And literally, when I started to use the revision to change my life, that doesn't change the fact that there was a riot in 1989. That doesn't change the fact that my body went through it, all that good stuff. But what it does is it changes what I'm reacting to. Because if you take, you know, if you take the time to revise a past experience, in other words, rewrite it, you know, experience it in, experience a whole new memory in your head, it's going to replace, it's, it's going to eliminate the cycles of you having to repeat that again and again and again in a life. Because you know, literally every time, current re neurological research shows that every time you access a memory, it changes. So literally, if you take a memory off the mental shelf, access it, and put it back up, the state that you're in while accessing that memory alters it. And so when I, when I started noticing that, and again, current neurological research demonstrates this is true, uh, you know, it, it becomes common sense. Why not deliberately change your memories? Because if you can do that so that you don't have to yeah, you know, date someone for three months and break up and date someone for three months and break up and date someone for three months and break up, which is one pattern I had a client doing because that was her first relationship. They dated for three months and they broke up. So she built things into her neurology and into her patterns that would cause breakups every three months. It was terrible for her. But I, we had her go back and revise the relationship so that it lasted for much longer. And when it you know, dissolved, it dissolved into something even better into a relationship that lasted even longer, that dissolved into something better. And by rewriting those memories, it literally took her out of that thing of creating the circumstance in her life or the anxiety in her life that was ruining her relationships. And, and it's, it's almost weird when you think about it, but it's, it's so true that every time you access a memory, you change it. So why not change it to something that supports the growth that you want in your life? Mm, I love that. It, especially, it's true because every time we access a memory, it comes back to that example uh, with the teenage boy approaching the teenage girls. Every time we re re bring up a memory, we also pick up more things to attach meaning to, and often those yeah. are negative. Yeah. So, so why, so why not use it in an empowering way? It, it, it's it's such common sense. You know, we can either. You know, let the machine lead us, or we can lead the machine. And the machine really wants us to lead it. It's just like a car. So, so why not just take the time to decide? You know what? You know, this is what I want in my life. You know, my first. You know, you know, and again, if you go back to like I was working with a business guy, who you know had a business that crashed, and we went back and had him revise it so it was successful, but not just focusing on the business. We had him develop new uh, behavioral strategies so that his business was successful. And so by d developing the new strategies in his old business, in his imagination, he applied them to his new business, which again you know, improves his income and improves his survivability. So I'm curious, Twenty, uh, when you're revising like a whole business, say you had a business for five years, how yes. long would, would that session be? Could, do you go over everything that needed to be changed or do you have it, keep it general? You know, great question. Like literally, uh, so, so I'll tell you a scene from my past. 
I had an Army-Navy store years ago, and the first two years I was in business, I didn't take credit cards because I didn't want to pay 1.5% fees to the bank. And in a way, that crushed my business because I missed out on a whole bunch of additional sales and all that good stuff. And so looking back at that, I'm able to go, okay, the kind of guy I was back then didn't understand business. And so I went back and I rewrote that I took credit cards. And why did I take credit cards? Because I studied business and you know, I had mentors. And so when I started approaching life with studying business and having mentors, when I started my current business, you know, it was easy for me to decide, okay, I'm going to invest in credit card processing. I'm going to have mentors, work with coaches, because in my mind, I had already done that. Mm. Thank you. That's really helpful. Cool. So 2020, we have just a few minutes left in the show before Parts Unknown starts. And I'm just wondering, um, we have four or five minutes to go. What do you feel is the most important thing that you want listeners to take home from this? You know, what it really comes down to is this. You, you've got one out of two ways to experience your life. Uh, you can experience your life looking through the senses. And when I say looking through the senses, I mean this. Right in front of me is my Apple computer. And if I look at the computer, the only th if I look at it with the eyes, the only thing I see is a computer. But if I look at it with imagination, what I see is potential. Because that computer to me not only earns me a very decent living, it keeps me in touch with friends and families throughout the world. That computer allows me to talk to you today. That computer allows me to change lives because if I could only preach my message, quote unquote, to the people around here in Eltham, uh, I'd only have maybe 20, 30 people that might be interested. But we impact thousands of people's lives every day because of this computer. And so backing up again a tiny bit, you can see with your eyes or you can see with your mind. Your eyes will tell you what's in front of you as a computer. Your mind will tell you what's in front of you if you imagine effectively a way to make a living, a way to make a difference. And that's what we get to do. We get to notice, am I seeing with my eyes or am I seeing with my imagination? And it's the people that see with the imagination that make these massive changes in the world whether it's Walt Disney or Tesla or Edison or Ford, or whether it's just the person who comes home at the end of their work day and they look at their wife and what they imagine when they look at their wife is what makes the difference. It's not just, oh, there she is, but it's there she is. There are my kids. What you imagine about the people around you makes the difference. And so take the time every day to, to see with your imagination not just with your eyes and begin there because that'll change everything for you. Mm, I love that. So Mr. 2020, thank you so much for being on the show. It has been such a pleasure and I could, again, I'm going to have to have you back on, but how can people best get in touch with you if they have questions or they want to sign up for your mailing list? Cool. Go to freenevel.com. That's F-R-E-E-N-E-V-I-L-L-E.com. Uh, sign up. There, there's going to be a little box there that says download 221 of Neville's lectures. So that's like three inches of material if you print it. Uh, put, put your name and email in the box. Get on the newsletter. Even if you don't read all those lectures, because it'll take you a lifetime to do that, uh, that registering there will get you on the mailing list. That way you'll get our little simplified lessons every day. And again, we answer every email. So if you're on the email list, you're beginning the daily lessons. If you send us an email, I promise we will write back to you. And that's the best way to do it. Just go to freenevel.com and get on the mailing list and email us anytime. Yay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Anything you want to add before we say goodbye? I just want to th uh, thank you for having us on the show. You know, the number one attitude that will change your life is that attitude of gratitude, that thankfulness. And I'm thankful to be here with you. You've got a lovely energy and I'm thankful for the listening audience, the family that spent our, their time with us today because you only have so much time. And I'm thankful for the people that are listening that they've shared their lives with us by investing that time. So uh, that's all. Thank you so much.
Yay, that's all, folks. Well, thank you again. And it's time for Parts Unknown. This is Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'll be back next Monday. You can visit me at spiritualshow.com. Again, we were speaking with Mr. 2020. If you want to check out his site, it's freenevel.com. And stick around here on CITR for Parts Unknown with DJ Chris Arific. Want to send you so much love. I love you so much. Namaste. Namaste.